Hi, I'm Glenn Dewis. Welcome to episode 58. And this week, I've got a really quick tutorial for you. It's a special effect that you can use in your pictures to make it look as if the windows in buildings are all broken and smashed. Okay, so this is a really, really quick tutorial to show you a special effect how we can make the windows in this particular building here look as if they're all broken and smashed. Now, a quick disclaimer before we do this is to tell you that the image you can see on screen is a, a stock image. It's one that I've purely chosen to show you this technique on. So it's certainly not gonna form part of any picture I'll be working on in the future, but if it was, when I was making the windows look broken, I'd also then go on to make it look as if the brickwork was much more decayed by adding textures onto it. And I might even remove parts of the building to make it look as if it really was decayed and parts of it, parts of it were falling down. But we're not gonna do that in this tutorial. All I want to do is show you how we can make it look as if the windows are broken. Now we're gonna do that by using the magic wand tool, which is one that tend to either people tend to love or they tend to hate. And I think that's because of the options that we get at the top of the screen. Now we know that whenever we use a tool over in the toolbar, we generally get options available to us at the top of the screen. But with the magic wand tool, we get two in particular, one called tolerance and one called contiguous. So what I wanna do just for a few moments is to kind of explain in layman's terms what those two are, what tolerance is and what contiguous is. Now, if I just zoom in just for a second, and I'm gonna take the tolerance down to something really low number now, I'm gonna take it down to say 10. Now, the way we use the magic wand tool is we actually just find an area of our pitch that we want to, uh, want to select, and we click down. So basically what we say to Photoshop is wherever we click, have a look around the area and include pixels that are similar to where we clicked down. Now you'll see if I just press Q on the keyboard where we've got this red overlay on this area just in the middle, that's what we've just selected by using a low tolerance number. So a low tolerance is basically saying to Photoshop, only choose pixels around the, no the local area that are very, very similar to where you clicked down. However, if we just deselect that, if I increase the tolerance now to maybe, I don't know, let's go crazy, let's go to around about 70. Now, when I click down in this little window, you'll see that a lot more of the window has been selected and we'll just cover that with a quick mask. So you see all the window has been selected. So basically the higher the tolerance, it's basically saying to Photoshop, have a look around the local area from where you've clicked and include even more pixels, pixels that aren't that close to where I've just selected. They've got a slightly larger range of difference in tone and contrast and include those. So tolerance is basically a way of saying how much is selected. A low number means only a small amount. A high tolerance means more pixels, more variation in tone and contrast will be included within that selection. So moving on from there, what does contiguous mean? Well, at the moment you'll see I've got a little tick in the checkbox of contiguous. Think of contiguous as meaning adjacent to or next to. Because what you'll notice is if I kind of, let's bring this tolerance down to 20, something like that and then I click in the window, you'll see that nowhere else in the picture is included in that selection. So there's the quick mask on and off. No other windows have got any selection in them at all. However, if I take the tick out of the contiguous checkbox, Basically what I'm saying to Photoshop is, look, when I click down, look for pixels that are fairly similar in the local area to where I've clicked, but also look across the whole picture to see if there's anything there as well that is similar to where I clicked down. So now when I zoom out, you can see straight away there's many more marching ants. And if I press the Q to go to Quick Mask, you can see now lots more has been included, not just in the window where I clicked, but also in the other windows. And we can use this tolerance and contiguous to our advantage now, especially with this technique, to make it look as if the windows are broken. So let's just come out of Quick Mask and we'll deselect. All right, so now using that tolerance and contiguous checkbox, let's take the tolerance up to around about 25-ish, something like that. I'm gonna leave the contiguous not with a tick in the checkbox there because I want it to look across the whole picture. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to come to this window here and I'm just gonna click. 
So basically what's happening now is lots of marching ants all over the picture. All the windows have certainly got a selection. We can see when we press Q that a lot of the windows have been selected there. And when we zoom in, the great thing is not all of the window has been selected. There's certain parts that have been missed. That's because we've got a fairly low tolerance number. So we've said only choose pixels that are similar to. These ones here clearly weren't that similar, so it's not included them when we have a tolerance of 25. So now we can zoom out. Now leaving those marching ants there, I'm going to add a blank layer to my layer stack, then go to the edit menu, choose fill, and from the drop down menu where it says contents and use, I'm going to choose black and click OK. And that's going to fill those marching ants now with black. Now, if we just go to select and deselect, we can see that obviously there's areas in the picture now that have been filled with black that we don't want to be included, like in the sky and certain parts of the brickwork. So all I'm going to do now is hold down my alter option key, come to the layer, layer map, at the bottom of the layers panel and click. And that's going to add a black layer mask to now hide the effect. So all I need to do is get a brush. I'll make sure that it's a simple brush that's 100% on the hardness and I have a white foreground color. And all I'm going to do is now paint in the windows to reveal what we actually filled in black. Only in the windows. We're doing it anywhere else but in the windows. So let's just paint around and we can see now this is bringing back in this kind of fake effect as if the windows are all broken. Now to save you sitting there while I go and do all this uh, painting in, I'll just stop the video and I'll jump forward so we then carry on with the tutorial. Okay, so I've jumped forward maybe 30 seconds or so just to fill in the rest of those areas with that black. But I think you can see now we are able to fake the look of those windows being smashed and it's very, very quick to do. But there is one thing I'll mention. If you're going to do this technique, make sure that the building you're doing it on forms part of the background. So if I just zoom out now, so let's just say the building would be way in the background of your picture. And I think now when we turn the layer on and off, we can see we are actually actually managing to sell that fake, as Joel Grimes would say, of making it look as if the windows are in fact broken. But it's very, very quick, very, very easy to use. And also, like I said at the start here, once you've done the windows, you then want to do something to the building itself. So you could maybe add some textures onto the brickwork and maybe cut off parts of the building so it really did look like it was decaying and falling down. And then having broken windows would kind of make sense. It would all kind of slot into place. But that's pretty much all I've got for you. It's a really, really quick video. I think we're under 10 minutes for the first time in ages, but I didn't want to kind of miss out this week, although we're really busy at the moment writing the book and planning lots of uh, travel, which is coming up in just a couple of weeks or so. But uh, it's a very, very quick effect. Another little thing that you can add into your Photoshop tool bag. Uh, if you want to see more about this kind of stuff where we could make the building look decayed, just leave a comment section uh, below. But like I said, that's all for this week. Make sure you click on the subscribe button if you haven't already. Let other people know about it really do appreciate the support while you're doing that. But until next week, I'll see you next time.